All right, students, this is Ms. Koken, and we're back in Chapter 6, Random Variables, looking at transforming and combining random variables. Once we get through with this section, we'll be able to describe the effect of performing a linear transformation on a random variable. And remember, it's not just a single value of the random variable, but the entire distribution, the all of the values that the random variable can take on. We will also be able to combine random variables with one another and then calculate the resulting means and standard deviations. And we will be able to do that not only with discrete distributions, but also the normal random variable distributions. So just a quick refresher of our memory. When we perform a linear transformation on a random variable, when we add or subtract a constant, then we will change the measure of center and the location of the distribution so that me, kind of means slide it along the horizontal axis and it will not change measures of spread so measures like standard deviation range and IQR will not change when we multiply or divide an observation or random variable by a constant B then what we're doing is we're multiplying every single number in the distribution by that value, by that constant B. So what that means is it will change not only the measures of center, but it will also change the measures of spread. The shape will be the same, but it may be stretched out a little bit or squished together a little bit. Okay, so we'll take a look at an example and you can refer to this example in your book. Pete's Jeep Tours has a half day trip. He will require two passengers for the trip to run. He can take up to six passengers on a day. So our values of the random variable X, which is the number of passengers that can go on any randomly selected day, is going to go between two and six. And we have a probability associated with each one of those. This is random variable X, the number of passengers. When we graph it, we see that the discrete distribution looks like a histogram with rectangles. and we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation. We learned how to do that in section 6.1. Now Pete charges $150 per passenger. So what that means is we're going to take the value of random variable X and we're going to multiply each of those by $150 per passenger. This is going to give us a new random variable C. And random variable C has a different value for the random variable but the probabilities associated with each value are the same. And if you graph it, you'll notice the shape is exactly the same for C as it is for random variable X. The shape is the same, but the axis on the horizontal is different. Frequency is the same because the probability is the same. But we do see the axis values along the horizontal axis are different because we're representing different things. The first time we're looking at number of passengers, the second time we're looking at money collected. And again, we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation through our calculations using the weighted average for the expected value and then expanding out the definition of standard deviation. We can also do it in our calculator. But we also notice that the measure of center has changed and the measure of spread has changed. How? By multiplying by the number 150 for $150 per passenger. All right, so how does multiplying or dividing by a constant affect a random variable? We just saw the effects of this. I'll ask you to pause the slide so you can read and take notes on this slide. All right, let's take a look at the distribution C again, which is the money that P collects on any given day. Now, it costs P $100 per trip to buy permits, gas, and a ferry pass. So we have a new random variable V and that describes the profit Pete makes on any randomly selected day. So for each trip it's going to cost Pete $100. Okay, That means that we're taking random variable C and we're subtracting a constant $100 associated with each one of the individual values. When we look at the probabilities, the probabilities haven't changed. So what that means is in our new distribution, the value of the random variable is going to be different, but the 
probability is the same. Once again, when we graph it and we compare the two graphs, our axis values are going to be different. This time it slid to the left, if you will, because it decreased by $100 for each one of the bars in our histogram in the probability distribution. But the axis values on the vertical, which represent the probability, did not change. And again, we can calculate the mean and calculate the standard deviation. Notice the standard, we we subtracted a constant, so the standard deviation did not change, but the measure of center did change. The mean and the median will change, and they changed by $100. We subtracted $100. Comparing the shape, center, and spread, this is referring back to our GSOX model, and you can see that the, the shape stayed the same, the spread did not change, and once again the center did change by $100. Okay, so when we subtract a constant, how does that affect the random variable? Pause the video so you can take notes on this slide. Okay, once again, when we're dealing with random variables, the effect of a linear transformation means that we're looking at what would happen to the random the new random variable after we've added a constant and then add means either add or subtract and multiplied by a constant. So when we're doing both of those, that's what this is representing, the probability distribution of y, the new random variable that's been created through a linear transformation on the random variable x. The mean is going to be affected both by the addition component and the multiplication component. And that's not only the mean but the median will be affected, measures of center. The standard deviation will only be affected by the multiplication, not by the addition or subtraction. And when I say multiplication, again, I mean multiplication or division. Okay, so sometimes we're looking at a single random variable and sometimes we're looking at combinations of random variables. So in in our example of Pete's Jeep tours, we had random variable x, which is the number of passengers on one of Pete's tours. We had uh, a new random variable, or we are creating a new random variable y, which is the number of passengers on a randomly selected trip with Aaron's adventures. So we have a new random variable t, which is the combination through addition of random variable x and random variable y. So the total number of passengers combining Pete's passengers and Aaron's passengers. And how do we find the mean and variance of random variable t? Well, we have our original random variable x and our original random variable y. When we combine them through, in this case, through addition, we know that we're going to be able to add the means, add the expected values, and this is representing that. So the expected value of the new random variable t or mu sub t is going to be the sum of the previous expected values or means of the distribution. All right, what happens to standard deviation? Well, remember that we're going to go through variance in order to calculate standard deviation. Okay, so we're taking a look at all the different possible values. We want to come up with a new distribution. And so what that means is we're combining the possible values of random variable x along with the possible values of random variable y in order to come up with all the possible values and the associated probabilities for the new random variable t. So to come up with the, the value of random variable t, we're just going to add. You can see that in the column labeled lowercase t, which is the sum of x and y. And to come up with the probability for that combination, we're going to multiply the probabilities that we gained from random variable x and random variable y. Okay, so we know that we can combine 
the expected values or the means in order to get the expected value or the mean of the new random variable t. And we also know this is the formula for expanding out the standard deviation or truly the variance. We would take the square root of that number in order to be able to get the standard deviation. So what do we know, what do we notice about the variance of t? Right, you probably notice that the variance is add. So we added the two variances to come up with the variance for the new distribution t. And remember, if we're interested in the standard deviation, we're just going to take the square root. Okay, so this rule explains what just happened, what we just saw in the example, that the variance of random variable t is going to be the sum of the variances of the original two distributions that we added together, that we just combined. Okay, you can only add variances if the two random variables are independent. And if they're not independent, we cannot combine the random variables um, variances in this way. And remember, we don't add standard deviations, only the variances. Don't make that mistake. It's a very easy one to make. All right. So if we're looking at subtraction, then the means will be subtracted. The variances, however, will still add. And once again, looking back at our dog and bun example, we, we saw this. So let's take a look at an example. And this one has to do with a normal random variable. And the normal random variables are going to combine in exactly the same way as we've just been describing. So Mr. Starnes likes between 8.5 and 9 grams of sugar in his hot tea. Suppose the amount of sugar in a randomly selected packet follows a normal distribution with a mean 2.17 grams and a standard deviation of 0.08 grams. If he selects four packets at random, what's the probability that his tea is going to taste the way he wants it? So we're going to look at our new random variable T, which is a combination of four random variables, one for each packet. They all follow the same distribution, which is the mean 2.17 and the standard deviation of 0.08. And our probability statement is that we're trying to find the probability that t is between 8.5 and 9 because that's how Mr. Starnes likes his t. So in order to find the expected value or mean, we add them all together and come up with the sum, which is the new mean for the new distribution of random variable t. For standard deviation, what we do is we add together the variances. And remember, variances are standard deviation squared. So we have to square the standard deviations that we were given in the problem, add them all together. That gives us the variance of the new random variable t. And in order to find the standard deviation, of course, we take the square root. Okay, We draw our distribution of our new random variable with the new mean and the new standard deviation that we just found. And then we calculate the probability the way that we did in chapter 2, which is using table A or using our calculator function and using the z-scores in order to calculate the areas. And remember that area under the density curve represents probability. So once we figure all this out, there's an 85% chance that Mr. Starnes' T will taste the way that he wants it to. So looking back at section 6.2, you can see that we learned how to add or subtract, multiply or divide a constant to a random variable distribution. And we've also learned how to combine distributions and see what happens. By the way, this idea of the variances is what they call the standard, the, um, I'm sorry, the Pythagorean theorem of statistics. And it still works even when you're combining more than two random variables. You can combine three or four or five. It really doesn't matter. You saw with the sugar packet example, we combined four different random variables. So keep that in mind. In the next section, we're going to learn about two specific uh, discrete distributions, binomial and geometric, and we'll see you then.